So, breath. These are different definitions of pneuma. Vital force, soul, spirit, holy. And then in the Hebrew language, it's ruah or ruach. And that's breath or spirit or wind. And I like this last one, courage. Because we talked about Dr. King having courage. If you ever get a chance, watch The Long Road to Freedom. On, it's free on YouTube about Dr. King before the march in Selma. All the things leading up to it, all the rides on the buses through all those cities, it's unbelievable how brave these people were, knowing that they were riding into a city where there, there's going to be people waiting with baseball bats and German shepherds, and that they weren't going to fight back so they could catch it on film and show the world what was going on before the days when everybody had a phone in their pocket. And the most famous interaction was because they recognized he was the biggest racist of all in the South. I can't remember the full name. His first name was Bull, I think. Bull Connor. Bull Connor. You're going right into the belly of the beast, knowing you're not going to fight back. And guess who the most courageous people on their whole team was? The teenagers. And this is what they said. You all have families. We're just getting started out. We have less to lose than you do, and more to gain if we win. And here's these teenagers, 90 pounds, walking in the front of the line. That's who the dogs were getting first. That's who was getting hosed. That's who was getting beaten. These kids, and going to the next town and doing it again. I'm telling you. That's Holy Spirit. We don't always relate it that way, but that's one of the definitions. It's the spirit in a person. That's our character. That's our backbone. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, right? Double backbone. You could be Marcus Luttrell or you could be Desmond Toss. They're both courageous. Sometimes you fight, sometimes you don't. They both work. And this is what Rahab said in Joshua chapter 2. She said, I know the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us. Our hearts melted, neither did there remain any more courage in anyone. The spirit was drained out of the people because of the power of God operating in their midst. We have to operate in the power of that courage. And I'm going to tell you, more now than ever in America, in, in my lifetime anyway, because there's a, there's a real hatred in the air right now that's swirling around us. And we're the church of Jesus Christ. The gates of hell will not prevail against us. There might be some persecution. That's okay. The church has prospered through persecution throughout history. There's no such thing as a free pass in life, right? There isn't. We'll talk about that another day, too. I just want to hit a couple of scriptures. This is what I already quoted, his partakers of his divine nature. It says, everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by the, his divine power, okay? That's Holy Spirit. Everything you need for life is already in you. He's given you magnificent promises that are beyond all price. You can experience partnership with the divine nature. He doesn't just automatically force his way in. He comes where he's welcome. So welcome him in. Every minute of every day, welcome him into your life because he'll help you do better than you would do on your own. Why wouldn't we pray? Why wouldn't we ask for his advice? He's not going to give you bad advice. But your flesh will tell you, you should eat from that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Even though God told you not to because he's trying to hold something back. And people are still doing this today. No matter what the statistics say, I'm going to try living together with the person before I get married. The, 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 it's got nothing to do with whether they're Christians or not. All the studies say it doesn't work. Make a commitment. And ladies, can I just say to you, you're worried about a lack of commitment from the man, but if you're living with him, why should he make a commitment? Selah. And the dads of these girls should be meeting the guy with a shotgun on the porch. You know, that's John Price's story, right? First time he met Cheryl's father, he went over to the house, and Cheryl's father walked out onto the porch, and he showed John a shotgun shell with his name on it, and it said, John Price. 
And this is what's going to happen to you if you mess up my daughter. And then he picked up the father by the ankles and, and the scruff of his jacket, and he lifted him up over his head. It's the first time you met him. And he said, well, you better not miss, because if you miss me, I'll kill you. Put him back down on the porch. And then the father walked back in the house and, and said to the mom, Cheryl's got a new boyfriend, and I really like him. <laughs> so that, they did stuff different down in the Pine Barrens than they do up here. <laughs> Jesus is right. So let me just build a little bridge here for you because this is how the Lord showed it to me. Jesus was the exact expression, right? And Spirit of God is the essence of the Father. Boiled down, everything living inside of you. What a dispensation that we're in, that Holy Spirit is living inside of us. And that we're on this side of Pentecost. Meaning, you know, the Pentecostal movement really started in Los Angeles on Azusa Street in 1906. And it hasn't slowed down yet. It's amazing. So the exact expression and the representation of his essence. How well, I already said it, do I express his essence? This is something we could be looking at every day. This is what God asks us to do, to examine ourselves. And then it goes to the anointing is expressence. <laughs> it's a new word. It combines those two things together. And it's like IQ and EQ. You know, IQ is intelligence, but EQ is the way you apply it, how well you handle things. That's what it's meant to be anyway. And that's what this is. It's like an ability to translate what the Lord is saying to us into every situation. And I found the more I asked, the better I got at it. Because I lived a long part of my life without even asking. And just thinking I knew. But why not just pause and hesitate and wait? And then I could be the expressance. <laughs> You can decide whether you like that word. For me, it means a whole lot. What's that factor in my life? How well did I know what he wanted to do and how well did I be what he wanted me to be? That's this translation process. That you can speak the truth to somebody and do it in love. All right, you good? And then I said, the anointing is expressing no prayer, no anointing. Peter's life. You guys decide whether you believe that or not. 